My name is Vincent Harding. I am a first-generation college graduate that's been driven by my faith to serve other people. My parents were working class people and dedicated their lives for, for their children. And so I, as a teenager, uh, decided that I wanted to get involved in politics. I thought through that I could help uh, other people. And that drove me to become the first member of my family and graduated from college. And I came to law school with $120.08 at the University of Texas School of Law. My first day of orientation, I met my lovely wife, Megan. Uh, and so we've dedicated our lives to public service, and I have been engaged in political activity and community service from mentoring to being homeless uh, to registered voters, and I'm excited to be running for city council. Awesome. So what, so what do you do now? Are you an attorney? Or? Yeah, so by day I am a lawyer and a real estate agent, and my experience includes me working for public entities, so I've helped advise elected officials on open meetings, open records, procurement, buying and selling real estate, negotiating contracts. So I have very practical experience with being a council member. And then my former experience in politics, I'm the former chair of the city's board of adjustment, dealing with land use variances. And then I'm also the former chair of the Travis County Democratic Party, where I worked with uh, nearly every elected official in town. We had the highest voter registration percentage ever at 92%. And I truly believe in grassroots advocacy, door knocking, and bringing politics to the community. Awesome. So why did you decide to run? What, what, did something happen in the community where you're like, I gotta, I gotta get in this game, or what happened? So for me, I received a ton of phone calls from folks in the community that had been a long time. And what they talked to me about was look at the community and the challenges that we face. Issues such as displacement, affordability, transportation, healthcare, criminal justice reform, and so much more. And as I said, I grew up in a faith-based home. There's a scripture verse that talks about to whom much is given, much shall be required. And I've been given some amazing opportunities in my life. And I believe my family, we were able to be fortunate and have our dreams come true. So I want to help other families accomplish their dreams. And I believe my practical experience as a lawyer and real estate agent makes me uniquely qualified for this position, as well as my relationships as being the former chair of the Democratic Party will allow me to step in on day one and build the coalitions necessary to get things done and really tackle affordability, transportation, and health care. Okay. Oh. And you were endorsed by the awesome uh, Or Houston. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it is a tremendous honor to have the endorsement of Council Member Ora Houston. She has served this community for decades. She has worked really, really hard. She's worked for the state. She's worked in the legislature. And so she understands what it's like to be a council member. And to have her support for someone who's been here that long, looking at me who's been here nine years and says, no, you're ready for this position, means a lot to me. I am the only individual in this race that has been endorsed by multiple current council members in a race for political office. So when you think about a council member, you have to get the six votes. And so my political experience, my political relationship, will help District 1 build a coalition that's necessary to accomplish our goals. Cool. Income, we really need to be looking at job training programs and help people get the training that they need for the jobs of the 21st century. So I want to partner with Workforce Solutions so that we can help people get that training at low to no cost. And while they're there, make sure that kids are safe so we provide child care at low to no cost as well. And from an infrastructure perspective, make sure that we improve mass transit so that people have shorter wait times more comfortable wait stops. It can get from point A to point B faster. We do that through dedicated pathways. And I believe through housing, income, and infrastructure, we can make improvements on affordability. And some of what you just talked about is kind of related to gentrification, which some would say is, is a big, big challenge, or if not the biggest challenge for District 1 and District 2 and District 3. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so with displacement, one of the things that we, we must recognize is there were a group of folks who were forced here through the 1928 plan. And now as a result of property taxes, the result of lack of economic opportunities, they're being forced out. And so we must reverse engineer this. And we do that by looking at affordable housing. We do that through a homestead preservation district that would create a tax increment financing system that would create long-term affordability. A community land trust that would set up the land to where people can own the home but not have to pay taxes on the land. These are the types of things that allow people that have been displaced to come back. And that's what we need to be doing when it relates to uh, displacement. And I, I talked about this earlier. The income piece is so important. 
helping people to make more money. We need to invest in job education as well as paid internships and paid apprenticeships. This is how people are going to get their foot in the door so they can get jobs and long-term security for their families. A recent article came out about me entitled Proven Under Pressure. I have been under pressure my entire life. Being the first member of my family to graduate from college, there was a lot of pressure. Being the first member of my family to go to law school, there was a lot of pressure. Becoming the youngest chair of the Travis County Democratic Party, there was a lot of pressure. And what I will say is that each of those instances, I not only got the job done, I excelled and I broadened the community. And so if you take a look at my experience this year at the Travis County Democratic Party, the highest level of voter registration, which is so important, because it talks about the ability to bring people together and have more people being engaged, as well as I pioneer community conversations. So after years of silence on important issues such as policing and immigration, I brought policymakers to the community and then I handed the microphone to those in attendance that can get questions and direct feedback from their elected officials. That's what it's gonna take as we move forward.